Hi, my loves. Welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. Okay, if you don't know, I am Star. Happy Sunday. Okay, y'all. Um, yes, I have on the same outfit because I'm recording all these videos prior. Okay. And let's get into this message. Okay, today's message is going to be about new age traditions. God wants us to let go of these traditions. And I know some of you are thinking, I don't practice new age traditions. And I understand. If you don't, I understand. Um, but I feel like God is asking me to talk about this because I heard specifically horoscopes last night um, when God told me talk about horoscopes. I had two completely different subjects I was going to talk about. And God said, no, I want you to talk about these new age traditions. And um, I feel like I'm going to say this later on, but, you know, God is really going to want us to really look into the things that we have, the things that we are practicing and think about if they are of God or are not of God. So, you know, this is a video really for everybody and I'm going to get right into it. OK, I'm going to start off with prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will speak through me, Lord. I pray that you will remove any of my own personal opinions, Lord, and that you will allow me to be able to feed your children and tell your children exactly what you want them to hear. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, let's get into it. The first scripture God took me to is 1 Samuel 15, 1 through 11, okay? Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you, king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they, when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go and attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. So Saul summoned the men and mustered them at Telaim, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 from Judah. Saul went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in the ravine. Then he said to the Kenites, go away, leave the Amalekites so that I do not destroy you along with them. For you show kindness to all the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites moved away from the Amalekites. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agag, king of Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat cows and the lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all night. The word that God gave me with this scripture is holding on to what God told you to destroy can cause you to be dethroned. Okay. Okay. God is saying, if you do not turn away from these practices, you will be dethroned from your purpose in the kingdom. Um, and I feel like this is just simply holding on to, let's say you uh, read tarot in your past. You're trying to hold on to some cards. Are you trying to hold on to um, whatever crystals or whatever kind of food? Throw that stuff out. Throw it out. God says he does not want you to hold on to these things. Let go of everything, everything, everything. And, you know, I feel like God told me horoscopes because horoscopes, in a sense, it kind of seems like it's not as bad. But I feel like God pointed it out specifically because he's saying, yes, that too. Stop reading that. Stop um, applying that to everything and stop applying that to everyone. Um, and this is, this is what God is saying. God is saying, if you do not do this, he is going to be angry with you and he is going to turn his back on you and he will give your a position to someone else. Okay. And let's go on to the next scripture. The next scripture comes from Isaiah six through eight. 
Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. The message God gave me is let go of these ways and God will forgive you. If you are trying to hold on to little things, little trinkets and little memories, God is going to see that, okay? You can't hide nothing from God. God sees everything. He sees every single thing. Any little thing that you're holding on to, nine out of 10, you're not using it anyway, so throw it away. Why are you holding on to it for? Let it go and, you know, put it in the trash and let that be that. Wash your hands of it. If it's not something that you are holding on to and it's something that you are doing, okay, God still sees that. God still knows, okay? So whatever it is, let go of it. Let go of it. If you watching videos that you shouldn't be watching, let go of it. Listening to music you shouldn't be listening to, let go of it. Completely purge everything of this new age tradition, okay? And the next scripture comes from Amos 2, 7 through 16. They trample on the heads of the poor as on the dust of the ground and deny justice to the oppressed. Father and son use the same girl and so profane my holy name. They lie down beside every altar on garments taken in pledge. In the house of their God, they drink wine as fines, taken as fines. Yet I destroyed the Amorites before them. Though they were tall as cedars and strong as the oaks, I destroyed their fruit above and their roots below. I brought you up out of Egypt and led you 40 years into the wilderness to give you the land of the Amorites. I also raised up prophets from among your children and Nazarites from among your youth. It is, is this not true, people of Israel? But you made the Nazarites drink wine and commanded the prophets not to prophesy. Now then, I will crush you as the cart crushes when loaded with grain. The swift will not escape. The strong will not muster their strength. And the warrior will not save his life. The archer will not stand his ground. The fleet-footed soldier will not get away. And the horseman will not save his life. Even the bravest warriors will flee naked on that day, declares the Lord. The message God gave me is what will happen to those who refuse. If you refuse to stop this, even some of the things he's saying in the scriptures, father and son use the same girl. What kind of foolishness is that? That's not of God. You can't carry that into this new age. You can't, you can't, that is new age. Okay. You can't carry this into the new, uh, that God is trying to bring. God is trying to bring us into a new, a new time. We're, we're being cleansed of these type of things. Drinking wine that was taken, uh, as a fine. So you have fined someone and now you are using that fine to pleasure yourself by drinking wine by buying wine or spending the money or whatever you are doing, that is not of God. God is saying he is going to destroy these things. He doesn't care who you are, okay? You commanded the prophets not to prophesy. And I talked about this, how some people will try to come in the comment section and say that you, you not doing right or why are you doing this, or all of this foolery. It is not your place. God calls, not man. And it is not your place to stand in the way of what God is trying to do. It is not your place to try to tell somebody what they can and cannot do. Only a person of new age will feel some kind of way uh, threatened by somebody speaking the word of God. Only somebody that is into this foolishness will feel as though they have the authority or the right to tell somebody that they cannot prophesy or they cannot do as God is telling them to do. Okay, God is saying, turn away from this. If you don't, I will crush you. The swift will not escape. The archer will not escape. The fleet-footed soldier will not escape. The bravest warriors will not escape. Let go of these things. Uh, start denying justice to the oppressed. People that are sitting back and laughing at people when they are going through things. People that are sitting back and um, making fun of people profane my holy name these are people that god are that god shined his light on these people we already know the oppressed god loves the oppressed god loves the uh even the people that are going through things 
And just like I said in the prophecy yesterday, if you are going through something, even if you are in a time of healing, you are still in a good place because you are in the arms of God. God has his hands around you. And it is not of God for somebody to sit back and laugh at somebody that is going through something because you don't know what their next chapter is going to look like. You don't know. Speaking harm on people is not of God. Trying looking at somebody and saying and saying that you think they're not going to make it or they're not going to be able to do this or they can't do that. That's not of God. You don't know what they can do. You don't know what God is, has in store for them. These are things of this new age tradition. It may not seem like it. It may not seem like it, but it is. God is considering all of these things a part of Babylon, a part of Egypt. We as children of Israel are not supposed to be this way. I went over the scripture where God said there were thousands of prophets. It's not just supposed to be one. Thousands of musicians, thousands of guards. You can't expect that you are the only one. And you can't expect that um, you are you have the authority just because God gave you a position to tell somebody else that they can't do what God told them to do. Okay. The last scripture comes from Ezra 10, 12 through 17. The whole assembly responded with a loud voice. You are right. We must do as you say. But there are many people here and it is the rainy season. So we cannot stand outside. Besides, this matter cannot be taken care of in a day or two. Because we have sinned greatly in this thing, let our officials act for the whole assembly. Then let everyone in our towns who has married a foreign woman come at a set time, along with the elders and judges of each town, until the fierce anger of our God in this matter is turned away from us. Only Jonathan, son of Ashiel, and Jaziah, son of Tigvah, supported Meshalam, and Shabithai, the Levite, opposed this. So the exiles did as was proposed. Ezra the priest selected men who were family heads, one from each family division, and all of them designated by name. On the first day of the 10th month, they sat down to investigate the cases. And by the first day of the first month, they finished dealing with all the men who had married foreign women. With this scripture, God is saying, take out the time to double check everything. Make sure you didn't forget anything, everything, every little thing, everything. Okay. Even if it's an app, a song, a playlist, everything, everything that God said he doesn't want you to have. Everything that God says is part of new age traditions. You need to cleanse yourself from it. You need to confess of your sin and you need to give your life back to Christ. Okay, as God has been telling me, the door is open. Cleanse yourself of these things and confess of the things that you have done so that God will accept you and God will forgive you. God will forgive you if you just come to him. And he's even saying, come while I'm here, because God is getting ready to shut down Babylon and you have to choose. Are you going to be a part of Babylon? Or are you going to be a part of God's army? Don't forget the first part, okay? If you are holding on to things that God told you to let go of or destroy, God will dethrone you. And that's the message, okay? I hope it is received. I hope it is, um, I hope it helps those that it's supposed to help. And, you know, that is the message for today. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. If you need to give your life back to Jesus, if you want to give your life back to God, go ahead down in the description box and read that prayer. I'll see you guys on the next video. Deuces.